welcome to another video lesson with Takoa Lawson. We're going to continue our description of motion. We've already gone over the variables that are important describing motion, mainly looking at time, position, velocity, and acceleration. We're going to look more closely at how the variables that describe motion are related to each other mathematically and be able to apply those mathematics describing or analyzing motion in the universe. The more standard description is when we have uniformly accelerated motion or when we have a constant acceleration. In some instances, it might not be a constant acceleration, but we use the average acceleration so that we can treat it as though it's a constant acceleration. In other cases, it's actually a constant acceleration. There are several instances where the acceleration of an object or the acceleration of motion that we're observing is constant. When we have uniformly accelerated motion, sometimes you'll hear these referred to as UAM equations. Remember that they only are true when we have a uniform or constant acceleration. Be cautious about applying it because if it's non-uniform or non-constant acceleration or you don't have the average acceleration then these would not be a good route to find a solution to the type of problem. First, let's look at how we get the change in velocity. The change in velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to time. Since it's uniformly accelerated motion, that acceleration is a constant. The change in velocity is equal to the integral of acceleration with respect to time, from our initial time to our final time, and acceleration is a constant, the rules for when you integrate a constant is that it is that acceleration, or constant, times the final variable minus that acceleration times the initial variable. That's our bound integral. If our initial time is zero, then the change in velocity is simply the result of, or the product of, acceleration and time. Since your change in velocity is your final velocity minus your initial velocity, and that is equal to your acceleration times t minus t naught. Again, if your initial time is zero, then your final time is also your change in time. However, if your initial time is not zero, what we really mean is that v final is equal to v naught plus your acceleration times your change in time. That's our first UAM equation. You'll notice it relates final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and time. If we know three of those four variables and we want to solve for the fourth, this would be our equation to use. When we look at our change in position, our change in position is integral of velocity with respect to time. So our change in position is the integral of velocity with respect to time. over that time interval. Our velocity is a variable. Since your velocity is equal to your v initial plus acceleration times time, we could say that this is the integral from t naught to t of v naught plus acceleration times time with respect to time. Now we see that we have a sum of a functions, or sum of functions, so we want to apply the sum rule. So our change in position is equal to the integral of v naught with respect to time, plus the integral of acceleration times time with respect to time. v naught is initial value, it's a constant, right? Our initial velocity, it's that instantaneous velocity, it can only be one value. It might be changing, but at that instant in time, it can only be a single value. It can't be different values at that instant in time. So our displacement, when you have a constant, a constant is going to be v times t minus v naught times t naught. And we're going to add to that our acceleration. 
times time integrated. Acceleration is a constant, but time is a variable. Turns out it's the same variable that we're integrating in terms of. When you're integrating a variable, we have to remember that that variable squared divided by two. So this is going to be acceleration times time squared divided by two minus acceleration times time t naught squared divided by two. Or again, we have one half of a times t minus t naught squared. Or to clean this up, delta x is equal to v naught times your change in time plus one half of acceleration times your change in time squared. Since your change in position is your final position minus your initial position, you'll often see this written as x equals x naught plus v naught times your change in time plus one half change in time squared. Something interesting happens when we look at the constant velocity function. A constant velocity or average velocity is equal to the change in position over the change in time. And we already saw that that's equal to the velocity at some instant plus the initial velocity divided by two. If we look at this first UAM equation, we notice that the change in time is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by acceleration. And we can actually rewrite this equation. Delta x is equal to v plus v naught divided by two times delta t, but delta t is v minus v naught divided by a. Apply a little bit of algebra to this. Delta x is equal to v squared plus v naught v minus v naught v, which cancels out minus v naught squared divided by 2a. And again, just rearranging this, you see that v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2 times acceleration times the change in position or the displacement and this is another UAM equation that we can use. It's important to notice that in each of these instances, whether we're looking at this function or one of the other three that we've just described, acceleration must be constant. And all of them relate four different variables. If we don't have time or we're not looking for time, we want to use the equation that doesn't have time in it. If we don't have displacement, we're not looking for displacement, we want to use the equation that doesn't have displacement in it. And that's one of the ways that you can identify which equation to use. In some instances, you have multiple step problems. So you might use one equation to determine time so that you can use another equation to determine the unknown or the variable that you're trying to describe in the problem. For non-uniform motion, we really just have to rely on those calculus skills. We already looked a little bit at how those uniform equations can actually be related to using those same calculus skills. And you can always go to the calculus. It will never get you a wrong answer. But it does sometimes allow you to make more errors, or it might be harder than just simply going directly to one of the UAM equations. When we're looking at non-uniformly accelerated motion, we have to just simply look at the derivatives or the integrals of the related functions. We have a displacement that we're looking for. We're looking for the change of position. We have to do that by taking the integral of the velocity in terms of time. If we have the acceleration in terms of time, we would take the integral of that to get the velocity in terms of time and then take the integral of that velocity function to be able to get the displacement in terms of time. When we're looking at velocity, if we have the displacement function, it's the derivative of the displacement function with respect to time. If we have the acceleration, it's the integral of the acceleration with respect to time. If we're looking for acceleration, it's the derivative of the velocity function. Or if we have a position function, we could describe acceleration as being the second derivative 
of position with respect to time. And I mentioned a little bit about the idea of a jerk. Your acceleration, since it's not constant, it's changing, we can describe that change in acceleration as a jerk taking place. The derivative of your acceleration with respect to time is the jerk. The integral of the jerk with respect to time is your acceleration.